Kind of hard to believe sometimes that the person who's supposed to run the country always seems to end up in some kind of debt. I mean, if they're running into debt themselves, how does anyone expect them to run a whole country? I'm your host, Michaela, and today I'll be telling you the top 10 richest presidents that went broke. And make sure to hit the like, comment, and subscribe button if you enjoy our videos, because it really helps us out. But now, let's get started. Number 10, Donald Trump. Former President Donald Trump came to fame as a bash New York real estate developer with an outrageous hairstyle, high profile romantic exploits, and a gift for self promotion. Trump and Inherited the family business from his father, Fred Trump, a successful New York City builder and landlord. Six Trump owned businesses filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy in the late 1990s and 2000s. Five were gaming enterprises, including the famed Trump Taj Mahal and its parent company, Trump Hotels and Casinos Resorts. Most occurred during or following the major real estate downturns of the early 1990s and middle to late 2000s. The first bankruptcy filed in 1991 was arguably the most devastating for Trump's lifestyle. Trump funded the one billion Trump Taj Mahal with loads of high interest debt. Within a year of opening, the property was more than three billion in the hole, and Trump was personally on the hook for 900 million. Trump Hotels and Casinos Resorts was more than 1.8 billion in debt when it first filed for Chapter 11 in 2004. So overall, to summarize, he's broke and a really, really stupid person. Number nine, William McKinley. Before he was president, William McKinley was so broke he almost quit politics completely. In 1891, after William McKinley had been elected governor of Ohio, a major financial institution came after him for approximately $130,000. A few years prior, McKinley had helped Robert Walker, a businessman and former associate, launch a business by co-signing a loan. The panic of 1893 resulted in the demise of Walker's business, and little did McKinley know that Walker had taken advantage of his trusting nature and tricked him into assuming 100% responsibility of the loan. Walker went bankrupt and left the newly elected governor with the bill from the bank. McKinley was then going to resign as governor in order to go back to practicing law, where he could make more money. However, two of his political supporters, Mark Hanna and H.H. Colsat, saw presidential potential in McKinley and raised the funds required to bail McKinley out. President William McKinley's financial burden serves as a constant reminder. Be careful when co-signing and try to always have super rich friends who can bail you out of a $100,000 jam. Number 8, George Washington. In the late 1760s, George Washington went completely broke and his tobacco farm flopped. Washington went into business with a British merchant named Robert Carey. Washington grew the tobacco and Carey distributed it. As you can probably guess, it did not go so well. Washington believed that Carey was selling his tobacco for too cheap and mismanaging his supplies. Within a few years of business, Washington's farm began to hemorrhage money. But Carey agreed to finance the whole endeavor on credit until Washington's business improved. Washington ultimately fell into so much debt that he began feeling like a prisoner. By 1773, Carey and Washington had unsalvageable business relationship. The passing of Washington's daughter, along with the decision to diversify his crops, left Washington with just enough money to settle his debt. By 1774, he was able to settle his debt with Carey and sever all business ties with him. George Washington remained so poor that in order to go to Philadelphia to preside over the Constitutional Convention, he had to borrow money from George Mason. Number 7, Harry Truman. Harry S. Truman went broke well before he became president due to a failed business venture. In 1921, future President Truman and his business partner Eddie Jacobson opened a haberdashery called Truman and Jacobson Haberdashery. Business was initially great, as Truman and Jacobson were both veterans, and brought that military-grade work ethic into their shop. Unfortunately, no amount of hard work could have prepared the duo for the recession following the Great Depression, and in 1921, their business failed, leaving them both broke and nearly bankrupt. Truman refused to file for bankruptcy and insisted he back all his debts. He used connections made from his shop to land other jobs. He eventually paid off his debt in the 1930s. However, that wasn't the last of Truman's financial issues. In 1954, when Truman finished serving his second term as president, he had no savings, support, or income besides a $112 per month pension from the army. Truman had lived without a significant source of income until 1958, when Eisenhower enacted the Former President's Act in 1958, which provided Truman with a presidential pension. Presidential historians often regard Truman as one of the least wealthy presidents in modern history. Number 6, Bill Clinton. When President Bill Clinton left office in 2001, he was burdened by major legal bills stemming from his infidelity scandal, impeachment trial, and action to suspend his law license. During his presidency, Clinton had to hire a group of defense attorneys and racked up to $16 million in debt. But in just his first year out of the White House, Clinton earned nearly $14 million, giving 57 speeches, and he managed to achieve solvency within three years. Number five, Ulysses S. Grant. 
In the 1880s, Ulysses S. Grant lost practically every dollar he had to a Ponzi scheme. After losing his bid for re-election, Grant moved to New York City to go into business with Grant & Ward, an investment firm run by his son, Ulysses S. Grant Jr., and his business partner, Ferdinand Ward. Ward was described as a young, charming people pleaser with a talent for persuading investors to give up their money. Initially, Grant & Ward was a huge success. However, Grant Sr. soon discovered that Ward was taking investor money and using it to fund his own lavish lifestyle. In May 1884, Grant and Ward had failed, leaving the Civil War hero and former president absolutely broke. Desperate for money, Grant eventually turned to writing as a source of income. Unfortunately, in 1884, he was diagnosed with throat cancer due to years of smoking. Fearful he would leave his family completely broke, Grant immediately began furiously writing his autobiography. In 1885, Grant then passed almost immediately after finishing his memoirs. Though he never lived to see it, the book was successful enough to ensure his family's financial welfare. Number 4. James Monroe Due to an extensive career in public positions that paid poorly and demanded expenses for entertainment and protocol, James Monroe was crushed with financial obligations when he left the White House after his second term. For the next several years, he spent time pursuing the government for thousands of dollars due to him for past services. Eventually, the government did pay him a portion of the funds he wanted, and Monroe was able to leave a sizable inheritance for his family when he passed in 1831. On July 4th, the third of five founding father presidents to do so. Number 3. Abraham Lincoln In 1832, several years before he became president, Abraham Lincoln opened a business with a friend. But the business was unsuccessful and sank into the red. When the partner passed, Lincoln decided to bear the brunt of the debt rather than saddle his friend's grieving family with it. Creditors went after Lincoln in court and the sheriff took his only remaining assets, his horse and some surveying gear. He was then efficiently bankrupt before today's bankruptcy laws were on the books. Number 2. James Garfield James Garfield Garfield was probably the poorest man ever to become president. He was born in a log cabin and his father passed when the future president was still a toddler. The family was then plunged into poverty. Garfield worked on canal boats and as a janitor and a carpenter to pay the bills while reading and studying his own before getting into college. He would become a professor, a lawyer, a minister, a civil war hero, and finally president of the United States. Though he achieved the highest office in the land, Garfield still had very little money to his name when his life was cut short by an assassin's bullet in 1881. Number 1. Thomas Jefferson Thomas Jefferson spent his life in perpetual debt, always borrowing money with the hopes of impressing his peers with expensive clothing, fine wines, and his house. Jefferson borrowed money from everyone, even one of his slaves. Can you believe the nerve this guy had? Other factors, however, definitely contributed to Jefferson's debt problem. For starters, his agricultural business ventures continued to drain him of money. He also inherited debt from his father-in-law's passing and a loan he co-signed. Things progressively got worse for Jefferson. He eventually took on new loans just to pay the interest on old loans. In 1826, Jefferson petitioned the Virginia legislator to sponsor a lottery for his belongings. While the legislator eventually approved this, it only raised a fraction of the money Jefferson needed. On July 4th, 1826, Jefferson had then passed with over $100,000 in debt. Number 10. Luxembourg A city that looks straight out of a storybook, Luxembourg is both ranked in the top 2% of the list of best places to live in the world, and number 1 as the best city to live in Luxembourg. Not only is the country the second richest country in the world, known for award-winning wines, but the capital, Luxembourg, is famous for its underground network of tunnels and is a hub for finance and private banking. Rent for a two-bedroom apartment would cost around $25,000 a year, not including any amenities, public transportation, etc. Due to increasing population, lack of new housing and rising housing prices, the cost of living is only increasing in this expensive city. Number 9. Washington, D.C. This compact area on the Potomac River is home to the headquarters for the United States government, as well as many iconic museums and performance arts venues. According to GoBankingRates.com, to live comfortably as a renter, you need to make a little over $87,000 a year. And to live comfortably as a homeowner, you need to make almost $140,000 a year. Both which are extremely difficult when you consider the fact that the medium income in Washington, D.C. is around $90,000. Number 8. Switzerland Starting off with Bern. Bern, the capital city of Switzerland, stuns with its medieval architecture, fountains, and deep history. It's even been recognized as a World Heritage Site. The average price for a week-long trip would cost a family four almost $6,000. And rent and daily expenses for someone who lives there typically reach sky-high prices of about $2,500 a month. Now on to Basel. Switzerland's oldest university city, located on the Rhine River and close to Switzerland's borders with France and Germany, Basel is home to the world's biggest art fair every 
and June. For an estimated cost of around $3,000 a month, you can live among historical buildings, modern architecture, a dynamic art scene, and more. Now Geneva. Famous for the world's tallest water fountain, Geneva is a city with tons of luxe cafes and shopping for days. But all that luxury does come at a high price. Just for an individual, monthly expenses average out to about $3,500 when it comes to rent, food, and transportation. Just one glance at Zurich and you can see why the stunning city is one of the priciest in the world. The financial capital, which sits at the north end of the lake Zurich, is home to waterfront promenades, high-end shopping, and amazing chocolate. It's also the most expensive Swiss city to rent in, with an average rent cost of about $2,000 for a single person. Number 7. Toronto Toronto is one of the most expensive places to live in Canada, and also the most populated. Like Vancouver, Toronto ranks high among the most expensive cities to live in in the world. It costs an average of $1.2 million to buy a house in Toronto. The average monthly rent in Toronto is around $1,900 for a one-bedroom apartment. Due to the high population in Toronto, there's a high demand and short supply for real estate. This causes a spike in the price of the available properties. Additionally, Toronto is the economic center of Canada with many job opportunities, which also contribute to the influx of people. These factors also affect the cost of living in Toronto. Number 6. Oslo, Norway As the economic and governmental center of Norway, Oslo is a hub for trading, banking, industry and shipping, making it a thriving business center and affluent city. The eco-conscious capital city sits on the country's southern coast at the head of the Oslo Ford River, and is famous for its incredible seafood, museums, and Viking history. With that in mind, it only makes sense that this bustling city costs the average person about $2,300 a month, making it one of the most expensive cities in the world. Number 5. China Starting off with Shanghai. Shanghai, named the world's most expensive city in the world by Forbes in 2021, is an energizing city booming with business and billionaires. In 2021, it has the sixth largest concentration of billionaires in the world. As China's biggest city and global financial hub, with its stunning skyline, rich cultural history, and more, it's not shocking how many people want to live there and reside in this coastal city. With so many people living and working there, however, the area has some of the highest prices, with the average cost of living coming in at around $1,400 a month. Now on to Hong Kong. The biggest reason Hong Kong is on this list is simply because of how many people reside in the Chinese city. With over 7 million people living in the city alone, it's not necessarily necessarily the cost of rent that makes it a pricey city, but rather the competitive demand for housing and all the activities the city has to offer, like its endless markets, nightlife, and attractions. Lastly, Shenzhen. Shenzhen is a thriving popular city home to many of China's younger generation. With the average age being 32 years old, this makes it one of the youngest cities in the country. Although rent and food are especially pricey, you can count on utilities and internet to be inexpensive. Number 4. Brooklyn, New York Technically, Brooklyn is one of the five boroughs that make up New York City, but in the past 15 years or so, it has emerged as something of the metropolitan unto itself. Indeed, if Brooklyn were an independent city, its population would be on par with Chicago, the third largest city in the nation. Once upon a time, Brooklyn was considered a viable alternative for those who couldn't afford to live in Manhattan. Not anymore, though. Housing-related expenses, including rents and mortgages, are almost four times higher than the national average, and yet the median household income in Brooklyn is actually lower than the U.S. median. It's also over $25,000 below in the median household income in Manhattan. Happily, not everything in Brooklyn is eye-wateringly expensive. Utilities run about 7% higher than the national average, and healthcare is only about 4% more expensive. Groceries, utilities, and transportation expenses all are about 11% more than what the typical American pays. Number 3. Singapore Between 2014 and 2020, Singapore was named the world's most expensive city six times. For one thing, because it is such a small area, land is incredibly scarce. In addition, as the demand for property has increased, the supply has been limited, making the real estate market very competitive. The city also has very few natural resources and must rely on ports to import basic necessities like water, natural gas, electricity. Number 2. California First, I'm going to start off with Oakland. Oakland anchors one corner of a sort of Bermuda Triangle around San Francisco Bay Area, where affordable prices go missing. The second corner is San Francisco, as famous for its sky-high real estate as it is for Alcatraz and Fisherman's Wharf. The third corner is Silicon Valley, home to tech giants handing out six-figure salaries like candy on Halloween. Compared to its neighbors to the west and south, Oakland might seem like a bargain, but consider this. Although median household income in Oakland is about 23% higher than the national level, median home values are more than three times the U.S. as a whole. Rents and other costs for keeping a roof over one's head are simply elevated in Oakland. Total housing-related expenses are nearly 
three times higher than the national average. Groceries, utilities, and healthcare costs all run about 30% higher than the national average, while transportation costs almost 40% more. Now Los Angeles. There's a reason Hollywood celebs are dropping a lot of dough in a new apartment or home. It costs a lot to live that glamorous Hollywood lifestyle. Not only is Los Angeles location a major reason why housing is so competitive, especially with a population of 10 million people, but LA's high taxes for residents and sales tax of 9.5% make it costly to live there. In January 2020, apartment rentals reached an average of over $2,500, almost doubling the national average. And just to put it in perspective for you, the population of California is bigger than the whole population of Canada. Number one, Honolulu, Hawaii. To enjoy the perks of living in such a remote Pacific paradise, Honolulu residents pay more than they would on the mainland for pretty much everything. And it's not too hard to understand why. Most goods sold in Hawaii must arrive either by boat or by plane, which jacks up the price considerably. Honolulu has the most expensive groceries by far of all 262 urban areas surveyed for the cost of living index. A can of tuna, for example, is 31% more expensive than the US national average, while a dozen eggs are 2.5 times pricier. Even bananas cost more than double the national average. Bills can take a big bite as well. Utilities cost 2.4 times more than what folks pay on the US mainland. And healthcare and transportation are a fifth to a quarter more expensive than the US average. But as always, housing is the biggest income eater. Housing related costs are more than four times the national average in Honolulu. The average home carries a price of $1.5 million. But that is all, and thanks for watching. Donald Trump. The rare case of a celebrity running for president and actually becoming the president. Trump's celebrity career dates all the way back to 1980. Trump originally appeared on a talk show to talk about real estate. He published a book in 1987 called The Art of the Deal which helped his public image. Later in life, Trump actually was bankrupt a few times over his company. Donald Trump decided to run for president in the 2016 election and actually garnered enough votes to become the 45th president of the United States. Number 9. Kanye West Kanye has always been the center of attention for at least the last five years, with his many controversies being the most odd things you could read in a headline. Like when did Ye run for president? Well, in 2016, Kanye was so broke that he asked Mark Zuckerberg for an investment of $1 billion into his ideas. His finances eventually returned to him through his Yeezy brand, and now that he had enough money for a campaign and Mark Zuckerberg wouldn't listen to his ideas, he decided to run for president in 2020. He failed, but received 70,000 votes from 12 states. He has since said some very anti-Semitic things, being dropped by Balenciaga and Adidas, and has said he will run again in 2024. Number 8. Roseanne Barr In 2012, comedian Roseanne Barr decided to run for president of the United States, highlighting issues like environmental protection and the legalization of a smoky substance. She ultimately came in sixth. Roseanne caught herself in the middle of a controversy which got her cancelled. The comedian tweeted a racist comment in 2018 directed at one of President Obama's aides. The consequences for Barr were swift. ABC Entertainment President Channing Dungy denounced the star's words and announced that the network would no longer be a platform for the show. Robert Iger tweeted this about the situation. From Channing Dungy, president of ABC Entertainment, Roseanne's Twitter statement is abhorrent, repugnant, and inconsistent with our values, and we have decided to cancel her show. There was only one thing to do here, and that was the right thing. I agree with him. It's probably best she didn't win the presidency. Number 7. Wyclef Jean the Fuji's member was inspired to action by the earthquake in Haiti in 2010. The Haitian-born musician, songwriter, and politician attempted to run for the Haitian presidency, but his run was cut short rather quickly, as he didn't have the residency required to run. Over the years, Wyclef has faced a number of financial challenges. In mid-2012, the IRS and state authorities filed a $2.9 million claim against the singer for unpaid taxes. Wyclef has also been sued by a handful of creditors who claimed he never paid for services rendered. These services include $100 $133,000 to a New York law firm called Shukat, Arrow, Haffer, Weber, and Herbsman. The law firm sued Wyclef and was awarded a $100,000 judgment. Number 6. Manny Pacquiao The 2022 presidential campaign of Manny Pacquiao formally began on October 1st, 2021, when Manny Pacquiao filed his candidacy for the 2022 Philippine presidential election. He was a senator of the Philippines from June 30th, 2016 to June 30th, 2022, and was previously a member of the House of Representatives, representing the Sarangani Lone District. Pacquiao is affiliated with PDP Laban, the same party as incumbent Philippine president Rodrigo Duterte. He has been the acting president of PDP Laban since 2020. 
but the following year, infighting within the party caused the party to split to two factions, one led by party president Alfonso Cusi, who is loyal to Duterte, and another faction which sides with Pacquiao. The faction which regards Pacquiao as still party president nominated him as PDP Le Bon's presidential candidate on September 19th, 2021. Manny went on to lose the presidency. At number 5, Ronald Reagan. Did you know Ronald Reagan was a movie star before his presidency? That's right. Reagan starred in many films over the years, usually two movies a year actually because he would get a tax break if he performed in two films a year. That's pretty smart. He also came from humble beginnings. He was born in a small apartment and grew into a young man quickly. At 17, he began work as a lifeguard. He worked as a lifeguard for six summers where he managed to save 77 people from drowning. Reagan really had a glow up from lifeguard to president. I didn't even think you could do that. Number four, Jesse Ventura. Jesse Ventura was an American wrestler before his political run. Ventura wrestled for more than a decade and appeared in several anti-steroid educational campaigns following his retirement and admitted steroid use. He retired from wrestling in the ring after suffering from blood clots. After a brief stint as an actor, Ventura's post-wrestling career also turned political and he won his first campaign to be the mayor of Brooklyn Park, Minnesota, serving from 1991 to 1995. Three years later, he ran for governor of Minnesota on the Reform Party ticket defeating St. Paul's mayor and the state's attorney general in the election. Number three, Jerry Springer. Jerry Springer is an English-born American television presenter who has a net worth of $60 million. Without a doubt, Jerry Springer is most widely recognized as the host of the tabloid talk show, The Jerry Springer Show, which began as a political commentary program in 1991, but shifted its focus to tabloid news in the mid-90s to gain better ratings. Jerry Springer took two tries at running for office. In 1970, he ran for Congress and lost, but in 1977, he won the Cincinnati mayoral seat and served until 1978. Although he has 60 million right now, he used to be as broke as anyone else. Number two, Diane Neal. Diane Neal ran for election to the US House to represent New York's 19th Congressional District. She lost in the general election on November 6, 2018. In August 2018, the New York State Board of Elections rejected 1,852 of the 4,181 signatures submitted by Neal's campaign to place her on the general election ballot. The campaign needed to submit at least 3,500 valid signatures and Neal had just 2,329 valid signatures after the rejections. Neal's campaign appealed to the state Supreme Court and the court ruled in favor of her campaign on September 17th, 2018. Number one, Dr. Oz. The medical show host turned to politics and ran for Senate in Pennsylvania. On November 30th, 2021, Oz announced his candidacy for the Republican nomination for the United States Senate seat in Pennsylvania in 2022. After Oz announced his candidacy, a number of TV stations in Philadelphia, New York City, and Cleveland said that they would remove his show from the air, compelled by the FCC's equal time rule that provides any equivalent airtime to any opposing political candidates who request it. In his campaign, he called for immunologist Anthony Fauci, the chief medical advisor to the president, to be fired and also opposed vaccine requirements. What a weird fella. His products were sketchy enough and now he doesn't believe in vaccines? Ah, shucks. I didn't even know trillionaires exist, or at least existed, considering most people on this list were alive many, many years ago. I'm your host, Michaela, and today I'll be telling you the top 10 trillionaires who you didn't know existed. And make sure to subscribe if you aren't already, but now let's get started. Number 10, Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan was around from 1206 to 1227, and he was one of the most fearsome conquerors of all time. And by the end of his life, the Mongol Empire occupied a vast empire from Central Asia to China. Much of the wealth came from plunders, taxes, and control control of caravan routes along the Silk Road and provided the Mongols with valuable revenue. He owned 270,000 horses and purchased stone diamonds worth $1 trillion and gold deposits weighing in at a whopping 2 million tons, totaling $11 trillion alone. Number 9, Elon Musk. As of November 2021, Forbes has named Elon Musk the richest man in the world. Musk has a net worth of $281.6 billion as of late 2021. However, it's highly likely he has a lot more now. But it's suggested that he is the next trillionaire. If he did become one right now, he would be in a club of one person, considering there are no living trillionaires right now. Elon Musk's fortune is tied to Tesla and SpaceX. No doubt he also invests wisely in stocks, cryptocurrency, and such. How else could he keep building as well? Besides the sale of his Tesla vehicles and accessories and parts, there must be more for him to be able to amass such a fortune. Number 8, Zhao Zhu. Zhao Zhu was the sixth emperor of the Song Dynasty in China. His original personal name was Zhao Zongzhen, but he changed it to Zhao 
Gaozu after his coronation. He reigned from 1067 until his passing in 1085. The enormous wealth came from technology, innovations, and efficient reform in collecting taxes. The Song Dynasty was the first to use gunpowder and first to introduce paper money during the 11th century. The emperor supported the modern welfare state and the well-being of their citizens. When the emperor Shenzong did pass in 1085 at the age of 36 from an unspecified illness and was succeeded by his son, Zhao Zhu. Number 7. Jeff Bezos Before Elon Musk took the top spot for the richest man in the world, there was Jeff Bezos, who was slipped into second place in that category with about $201 billion. His wealth comes mostly from Amazon, which is probably the most popular and widely used retail online shop in the world. As with most wealthy people, Bezos likely makes smart investments in real estate and the stock market at least. It may not seem he has far to go to get back to first, but Elon Musk has certainly shown himself to be a fierce competitor. And with Elon recently buying Twitter, it's unlikely he will beat him out of that top spot. Number 6. Akbar the Great The Indian Emperor conquered hundreds of thousands of square miles of territory and ruled over much of the Indian subcontinent. Known as the Mongol Emperor from 1556 until 1605, he controlled around 25% of the world's GDP at the time, which would translate to a staggering $21 trillion today. The Mongols lived in a luxury rivaled only by the Bourbons of France, the Habsburg of Austria, the Romanovs of Russia, and the Emperors of China. So impressed were the British by the wealth of the Mongols, the word Mongol entered the English language as a term to describe an all-powerful ruler of industry, films, or other endeavors. Compared to Elizabeth of England, the seat of power of the Mongol Emperor was the Peacock Throne. It had in its background an image of a peacock with an expanded tail, decorated in gold and precious stones. The gold divan surmounted by bejeweled peacocks was a symbol of Mongol power and wealth. During Akbar's period, military innovations in cannons, fortifications, and the use of elephants were introduced. Number 5. Mansa Mousa Mansa Mousa was the emperor and sultan of the Malian Empire consisting of territory formerly belonging to the Ghana Empire in present-day southern Mauritania and in Mali and the immediate surrounding areas. His lands had vast gold deposits during his reign. Gold was in substantial demand and Mali may have been the largest producer of gold in the world, bringing him immeasurable wealth. The story of Mausa's gold pilgrimage has been told for ages. Mausa embarked on a pilgrimage to Mecca between 1324 and 1325, taking with him 60,000 men, all wearing brocade and Parisian silk, 12,000 slaves who each carried 1.8 kilograms or 4 pounds of gold bars, and heralds dressed in silks who bore gold staffs, organized horses and handled bags, and 80 camels which each carried 23 to 136 kilograms or 50 to 300 pounds of gold dust. Mausa provided all necessities for the procession, feeding the entire company of men and animals. Mausa gave the gold to the poor he met along his route. Mausa not only gave to the cities he passed on the way to Mecca, including Cairo and Medina, but also traded gold for souvenirs. Mausa's generous actions inadvertently devastated the economies of the regions through which he passed. In the cities of Cairo, Medina, and Mecca, the sudden influx of gold devalued the metal for the next decade. Prices on goods and wares greatly inflated. To rectify the gold market on his way back from Mecca, Mausa borrowed all the gold he could carry from money lenders in Cairo at high interest. This is the only time recorded in history that one man directly controlled the price of gold in the Mediterranean. News of the Malian Emperor's city of wealth even traveled across the Mediterranean to southern Europe, where traders from Venice, Granada, and Genoa added Timbuktu to their maps to trade manufactured goods for gold. Timbuktu soon became a center of trade, culture, and Islam. Today, Mausa's palace has since vanished. The university, Sankor, and mosque now still stand in Timbuktu today. Number 4. Amenhotep III He was around from 1388 to 1351 BC, and during the 18th dynasty, Egypt was a global superpower both in military and trade. His reign was a period of unprecedented prosperity and artistic splendor when Egypt reached the peak of its artistic and international power. Amenhotep was lucky. During his reign, there were no wars and Egypt's weapon trade was at an all-time high. He kept all money inside the family, so when his mother, who controlled most of the wealth, passed, he became head of the family. This gave him literally all land in Egypt, giving him a total wealth of four to six trillion dollars. Number three, King Solomon. King Solomon's riches came from taxation, trade, and tributes, and was around from 970 to 931 BCE. According to the Bible, King Solomon during his rule is said to have received 25 tons of gold for each of the 39 years of his reign. In a single year, according to 1 Kings 10.14, Solomon collected tribute accounting to 666 talents, which is 
18,125 kilograms of gold. Solomon is described as surrounding himself with all the luxuries and the grandeur of an Eastern monarch, and his government prospered. The Hebrew Bible credits him as the builder of the first temple in Jerusalem, using the vast wealth he and his father had accumulated. He dedicated King Solomon's temple to Yahweh, the God of Israel. Number two, Bill Gates. Bill Gates is a big name across the globe as the founder of Microsoft and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. His net worth comes in at around $137.9 billion, which is a far cry from being a trillionaire. Currently, Gates is undergoing some potentially negative press related to his divorce from Melinda Gates. That said, together, their post-divorce donations have gone over $3 billion in the first quarter of 2022, so maybe he's next in line to be a trillionaire. And if you're wondering why no trillionaires are alive today, it's probably because of inflation. Also, a little fun fact, because why not? A trillionaire could give every person on Earth $140. Number one, Augustus Caesar. The Roman Emperor was around from 63 BC to 14 AD and controlled vast stretches of land throughout the Roman Emperor, controlling many states. His personal fortune was equivalent to 20% of the entire empire's economy. Caesar's wealth peaked when he owned Egypt as part of his personal private property. During this period, Egypt contributed 25 to 30 percent of GDP and had some of the best agricultural land. Starting off this countdown at number 10, Jim Carrey. James Eugene Carrey is a Canadian-American actor and comedian. He broke out as a star in motion pictures with Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, The Mask, and Dumb and Dumber, all in 1994. This was followed up with Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls, Batman Forever, and Liar Liar. In the 2000s, he gained future notice for his portrayal of the Grinch and how the Grinch Stole Christmas, and for the comedy Me, Myself, and Irene, as well as Bruce Almighty, A Series of Unfortunate Events, Yes Man, Horton Hears a Who, and A Christmas Carol. In the 2010s, Carrie appeared in the films Mr. Popper's Penguins, Dumb and Dumber 2, and portrayed Leap Day William in the sitcom 30 Rock. In 2020, he portrayed Dr. Robotnik in Sonic the Hedgehog and its 2022 sequel, and Joe Biden in six episodes of Saturday Night Live in the lead up to the 2020 United States presidential election. But before his biggest role on In Living Color launched the Canadian comics career in 1990, things weren't so Smooth. At 12 years old, the actor was homeless and living in a van after his father lost his job. Number 9, Selena Gomez. Selena Marie Gomez is an American singer, songwriter, actress, and producer. Gomez began her acting career on the children's television series Barney and Friends from 2002 to 2004. As a teenager, she rose to prominence for starring as Alex Russo on the Disney Channel television series Wizards of Waverly Place. Alongside her television career, Gomez appeared in the films Another Cinderella Story, Princess Production Program, Wizards of Waverly Place the Movie, Ramona and Beezus, Monte Carlo, Spring Breakers, Neighbors 2, Sorority Rising, and A Rainy Day in New York. She also voiced the character Mavis in the Hotel Transylvania film franchise. Gomez also executive produced the Netflix television series 13 Reasons Why and Living Undocumented through her production company July Moonhead Productions. She also earned a nomination for Best Actors in a Comedy Series at the Critics' Choice Television Awards. She also made history when she was nominated as a producer for the Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Comedy Series for Only Murders in the Building at the 74th Primetime Emmy Awards. However, when she was an 18-year-old Disney star in 2011, she revealed to Hollywood Life that her mother gave birth to the future superstar when she was just 16 years old, and worked several jobs just to put food, often dollar store spaghetti, on the table. Number 8, Halle Berry. Halle Berry is an American actress. She began her career as a model and entered several beauty contests, finishing at the first runner-up in the Miss USA pageant and coming in sixth in the Miss World 1986. Her breakthrough film role was in the romantic comedy Boomerang, alongside Eddie Murphy, which led to a role in the Flintstones. Berry established herself as one of the highest paid actresses in Hollywood during the 2000s. She won the Academy Award for Best Actress for her performance of a struggle widow in the romantic drama Monsters Ball, becoming the only African American woman to have won the award and took on high profile roles such as Storm in four installments of the X-Men film series, the henchwoman of a robber in the thriller Swordfish, Bond girl Jinx in Die Another Day, and the title role in Catwoman, the later for which she received $12.5 million. Although she now has a net worth of $90 million, she grew up poor, raised by a single mother in Cleveland and once lived in a New York City homeless shelter before she made it big in Hollywood. Number 7, Kelly Clarkson. Kelly Clarkson is an American singer, songwriter, author, and television personality. She rose to fame after winning the first season of American Idol in 2002, which earned her a record deal with RCA. Her debut single, A Moment Like This, topped the US Billboard Hot 100 and became the country's best-selling single of 2002. It was included on her debut studio album, Thankful, which debuted atop the Billboard 200. Trying to reinvent her image, Clarkson parted ways with Idol management and shifted to pop rock for her second studio album, Breakaway. Supported by four US Top 10 singles, the title track, Since You've Been Gone, Behind These Hazel Eyes, and Because of You, Breakaway sold over 12 12 million copies worldwide and won two Grammy Awards. Clarkson took further creative control for her third studio album by December, co-writing all of its tracks and becoming its executive producer. Clarkson's fourth and fifth studio album, All I Ever Wanted and Stronger, returned to a lighter tone and pop rock sound, with the former becoming her second US number one album, and the later making her the first artist to win the Grammy Award for Best Pop Vocal Album twice. 
In 2016, Kelly Clarkson left the audience and herself in tears when she performed a rendition of her song Piece by Piece on American Idol. The reason for all the emotion, however, was because the song was about her troubled childhood, which was punctuated by her father leaving her and her siblings being split up and scattered among family members. Number 6, Demi Moore Demi Moore is an American actress. After making her film debut in 1981, Moore appeared on the soap opera General Hospital and subsequently gained recognition as a member of the Brat Pack with roles in Blame It on Rio, St. Elmo's Fire, and About Last Night. She had her breakthrough for her starring role in Ghost, the highest grossing film of that year. Her performance was praised and earned her a Golden Globe nomination. She had further box office success in the early 1990s with the film A Few Good Men, It's an Proposal and Disclosure. In 1996, Moore became the highest paid actress in film history when she received $12.5 million to star in striptease. She had starring roles in the films The Scarlet Letter and G.I. Jane, both of which were commercially unsuccessful and contributed to a downturn in her career. Her career has since had a resurgence with supporting roles in such films as The Hunchback of Notre Dame, The Hunchback of Notre Dame 2, Charlie's Angels, Full Throttle, Bobby, Mr. Brooks, Margin Call, and Rough Night. In 2019, she released a memoir titled Inside Out, which became a New York Times bestseller. But Demi Moore's father left before she was born, and the man who became her stepfather was frequently out of work, forcing the family to move frequently. However, number five, Mark Wahlberg. Mark Robert Michael Wahlberg, former stage name Marky Mark, is an American actor, businessman, and former rapper. He's received multiple accolades, including a BAFTA award and nominations for two Academy Awards, three Golden Globe Awards, nine Primetime Emmy Awards, and three Screen Actors Guild Awards. In the 1990s, Wahlberg was a member of the music group Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch, with whom he released the album's music for the people, and you gotta believe. Wahlberg made his screen debut in Renaissance Man, and had his first starring role in Fear. He also received critical praise for his performance in Boogie Nights, but as a child, he was one of the nine siblings in a broken home. He both used and sold substances as a child. He was also the aggressor in a series of violent, racially motivated assaults. The most serious charges resulted in imprisonment after being tried as an adult for attempting to take someone's life. Number four, Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester Stallone is an American actor and filmmaker. After his beginnings as a struggling actor for a number of years, upon arriving to New York City in 1969 and later Hollywood in 1974, he won his first critical acclaim as an actor for his co-starring role in The Lords of Flatbush. Stallone subsequently found gradual work as an extra or side character in films with a sizable budget until he achieved his greatest critical and commercial success as an actor and screenwriter. In 1977, Stallone was the third actor in cinema to be nominated for Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay and Best Actor. Stallone's film Rocky was inducted into the National Film Registry and had its props placed in the Smithsonian Museum. Stallone's use of the front entrance to the Philadelphia Museum of Art in the Rocky series led the area to be nicknamed the Rocky Steps. Philadelphia has a statue of his character Rocky placed permanently near the museum, and he was voted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. Sylvester Stallone was born in New York City's Hell's Kitchen, where his mother was a hairdresser. Broken expecting a child, he took a few parts in boo movies. At one point, he even sold his dog for cash. Number 3, Mila Kunis. Although she is mostly known for playing Jackie on that 70s show, she has shown the world that she can do so much more. Since 1999, she provided the voice of the self-conscious daughter Meg Griffin on the animated sitcom Family Guy. Her breakthrough film, however, was Forgetting Sarah Marshall, in which she played a free-spirited character named Rachel. She has since starred in the films Max Payne, The Book of Eli, Black Swan, Friends of Benefits, Ted, and The Oz the Great and Powerful. Mila Kunis publicly vowed she and her husband, fellow actor and A-lister Ashton Kutcher, will not raise entitled children. That's because she grew up poor. An immigrant born in Ukraine, Kunis Kunis's family fled to America as the Soviet Union collapsed. In a 2016 interview with the Daily Mail, Kunis recalled eating ketchup soup as a kid when food was scarce. Number two, Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix is an American actor known for playing dark and unconventional characters in independent films. He has received various accolades, including an Academy Award, a British Academy Film Award, a Grammy Award, and two Golden Globe Awards. In 2020, the New York Times named him one of the greatest actors of the 21st century. Phoenix began his career by appearing in television series in the early 1980s with his brother River. His first major film roles were in Space Camp and Parenthood. During this period, he was credited as Leaf Phoenix, a name he gave himself. He took back his birth name, however, in the early 1990s and received critical acclaim for his supporting roles in the comedy drama To Die For. Phoenix received further critical acclaim and a nomination for the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor for his portrayal in the historical drama Gladiator. He had success with the horror film Signs and The Village and won an Academy Award, a Golden Globe Award, and a nomination for the Academy Award for Best Actor for his portrayal of musician Johnny Cash in Walk the Line. In 2014, Joaquin Phoenix revealed that his childhood involved a Spartan existence with his family, who trucked through South America as part of a cult called Children of God. Now coming in at number one, Eminem. Eminem is an American rapper and record producer. He is credited with popularizing hip hop in middle America and is critically acclaimed as one of the greatest rappers of all time. Eminem's global success and acclaimed works are widely regarded as having broken racial barriers for the acceptance of white rappers in popular music. However, he was raised in the poor and racially charged area along Eight Mile Road, Detroit's symbolic poverty dividing line. I would change schools two, three times a year. 
Robert told Anderson Cooper in a 2011 interview while reflecting on how his unstable home life affected his education. I got beat up in the bathroom, beat up in the hallways, shoved into lockers, for the most part just for being the new kid. I would have later dropped out of school in the ninth grade due to problems he faced. People with famous parents must have it easy, but I'm not one so maybe I don't really have a say. I'm your host Michaela and today I'll be talking about the top 10 most successful nepotism babies. And make sure to subscribe because it really helps us out. But now let's get started. Starting off this countdown at number 10, Wyatt Russell. If you have encountered all the Not My Captain America comments across social media, you know that they're talking about John Walker played by none other than Wyatt Russell, the son of Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn who are esteemed actors. Russell has been in a lot of projects throughout the years, but some notable ones are playing the mentioned John Walker aka US agent in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, as well as playing Cooper Renfield in Black Mirror, specifically in the playtest episode. Russell has been involved in a couple new projects that continue to prove his talent, and we will see him return to the MCU in the upcoming Thunderbolts in 2024. He has talked about what growing up was like, saying quote, what Kirk gave me and my mom gave me was a mindset that you're an individual and you make your choices individually. Individuality is an important thing in this business to not lose yourself. And those were the most important things I got. There's nothing about acting that they can really teach you. Number nine, Lily Collins. British American actress Lily Collins jumpstarted her career at the age of two by starring in BBC's Growing Pains. She also is the daughter of famous English musician Phil Collins, who you may know from his award-winning songs and Disney's Tarzan that remains iconic. Collins had her breakthrough performance in The Blind Side. The film received praises even winning an Academy Award. Since then, Colin has starred in many hit films and TV shows, with the latest being Emily in Paris, a rom-com series on Netflix wherein she plays Emily Cooper, a marketing executive who moves to France to work on a French firm. Season 3 of the show will premiere on December 21st, 2022, so it won't be long until you see Emily again. She said about her experience growing up in the industry, quote, at the beginning, having Phil Collins as a dad was the most interesting thing about me. Now I've done eight films, it's an afterthought. I get kids who say, oh, I love your movie, but my mom loves your dad. It's really nice to be able to share that with him, but it doesn't define who I am career-wise. Number 8, Michael Douglas. In some instances, nepotism extends beyond industry names to Hollywood royalty. While Kirk Douglas may have had a less than savory reputation in Hollywood, his impact on the industry has been recognized by both the Academy and the American Film Institute. He was the star of the 1950s Silver Scream with several box office smashes under his belt. Michael has followed in his father's footsteps as a modern day movie star, and even directly borrowed from his father's legacy by taking on his rights to develop a film adaptation of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Outside of his father's legacy, Michael is well known for being an Emmy winner, an Academy Award winner, and an MCU star. Number 7, Maya Hawke. Maya Hawke is the daughter of actress Ethan Hawke and Uma Thurman, so talent really is in the family. Before stepping into acting, Hawke went into modeling for brands like Vogue and All Saints, much like her mother before starting out. Years later, she takes on the same path as her parents by accepting the role of Joe Marsh in the BBC series Little Woman in 2017. She then became more recognized when she joined the Stranger Things family as Robin Buckley, Steve Harrington's friend and co-worker. Recently, Hawke starred in Do Revenge on Netflix, a dark comedy film as a transfer student in Rose Hill Country Day High School, and befriends a popular girl who becomes an outcast after her ex-boyfriend Max leaks her video. Hawk is fairly new to the industry, yet she already has an impressive filmography, and will probably grow even bigger in the next few years. Not just in acting, but also music. She has said, quote, My parents are wonderful and really supportive and have given me a lot, and I feel really grateful to have their support. And they both love Stranger Things and I loved it before I was on it. Number 6, Dakota Johnson. While most people grow up with their parents' old sports trophies on the shelf, Dakota Johnson's parents, actors Melanie Griffith and Don Johnson, are both Golden Globe recipients. Dakota is the third generation of a matriarchy of Hollywood success. To her, Tippi Hedren, the legacy star of Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds, is her grandma. However, Dakota has said that her parents initially discouraged her from acting. Yet after growing up on film sets, she couldn't imagine herself choosing a different career path. Now, Johnson is best known for a leading role in the Fifty Shades series, or maybe for her infamous Ellen interview. See, no, that's not the truth, Ellen. You were invited. As she continues to rack up acting credits after capturing the public's attention in bold fashion, she said, I was so consistently unmoored and discombobulated. I didn't have an anchor anywhere. I never learned how to learn the way you're supposed to as a kid. I thought, why do I have to go to school on time? What's the point when you're living in Budapest for six months while your stepdad films a Vita and you go to school in your hotel room? Number 5, Maude Apatow. Most of the time you can point out a Nepo baby by their last name, or by them starring in a project that their parents may have directed, and Maude Apatow is one of them. The actress is the daughter of comedian, actor, and filmmaker Judd Apatow and actress Leslie Mann. It's likely you've seen Apatow in films that her father directed like This Is 40 and The King of Satin Island, even though they're usually small roles. However, Apatow has also starred in projects separate from her family, 
For instance, Apatow is better known for playing Lexi Howard in HBO's Euphoria, Rue's childhood best friend. The teen drama created by Sam Levinson follows the life of a recovering addict, Rue, as she navigates high school and other relationships. She also played Henrietta Castello in Ryan Murphy's Hollywood. She said, When I was growing up, my parents never let me act in anything that wasn't with them, and I remember as a kid wanting to be on Broadway. I really wanted to start working. And it was important to my parents that I finished high school and was mature enough to be able to handle myself in those situations without them. I'm really glad that I ended up staying in high school. I feel like when they let me start acting on my own, I was actually ready. Number 4. Angelina Jolie The world might know Angelina Jolie as a popular celebrity and one of Hollywood's highest paid actresses, but her short-lived stint as Angelina Jolie Voix is often forgotten. The daughter of Academy Award winning actor John Voix, an actress Marshalline Bertrand. Jolie's initial TV credits are listed under her and her father's shared last name. Jolie's complicated relationship with her father has been the source of many headlines over the years, and Jolie has openly tried to separate herself from her father's legacy, though changing her last name didn't magically rid her of nepotism's influence. Jolie used her spotlight to build an influence and award-winning career under her own name. Now we can only wonder if the Jolie and Pitt children will do the same. She has said, When my father had an affair, it changed my mother's life. It set her dream of family life ablaze, but she still loved being a mother. Her dreams of being an actor faded as she found herself. Number 3. Zoe Kravitz For the past couple of years, Zoe Kravitz has been involved in impressive projects, making her acting debut in No Reservations back in 2007. Zoe is perhaps one of the most known Nepo babies out there, with musician Lenny Kravitz and actress Lisa Bonnet as her parents. Having them as your parents, it's no question if you decide to follow their footsteps. Zoe has earned many awards and recognition for several of her roles, such as Big Little Lies and the Divergent series. People may also know her for portraying the iconic Catwoman in the 2022 superhero film The Batman. She said, When I was younger, I really wanted to prove to people I was a normal human being, that I was cool, chill. When kids were mean, the first thing I said is, She thinks she's so effing cool because her dad is famous. I just wanted to fit in. Number 2. Miley Cyrus Miley rose to fame alongside her dad, country music artist Billy Ray Cyrus. When Miley was cast in the Disney Channel show Hannah Montana, her real life dad played her television dad, Robbie Ray. Fans of Billy Ray might recognize the character's similarities, including the not so fictional reference to the chart topping song Achy Break Your Heart. It's obvious that outside of the family name, Billy Ray's passion for music massively influenced Miley's career. The Disney Channel star continued to forge her own path in acting, philanthropy, and music. Number 1. Elizabeth Olsen Lastly, Elizabeth Olsen is the younger sister of the famous twins Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. Before reaching her current status, Olsen can be seen in a couple of old projects with her sisters back when they were kids. And it only grew from there. Most people might know her as Wanda Maximoff, aka Scarlet Witch in the MCU. She first appeared in Captain America the Winter Soldier during the post credit scene and recently starred in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness as a villain. But besides being a part of such a huge universe, Olsen also takes on smaller films. Namely, Ingrid Goes West, a comedy film wherein she plays a social media influencer with a lot of following. When it comes to siblings, those who have one either love them or hate them. But you probably don't have a super famous rich one or probably wish you did. I'm your host, Michaela, and today we're talking about the top 10 richest celebrities you didn't know were siblings. And make sure to like and subscribe because it really helps us out. But now, let's get started. Number 10. Blake and Robin Lively Long before Blake Lively ever landed her starring role in the teen drama Gossip Girl, her older half-sister Robin Lively had a thriving acting career of her own. Back in the day, she starred in the cult classic film Teen Witch, and even had a major role on the hit show Twin Peaks. In an interview with Access Hollywood in 2017, the sisters sweetly shared that they are, quote, best friends, and that their bond is everything despite their 15-year age gap. They also have three more siblings, Robin's sister and Blake's half-sister, Lori, Robin's brother and Blake's half-brother, Jason, and Blake's brother and Robin's half-brother Eric. Lori is the oldest and Blake is the youngest of the crew. All five share the same mother, talent agent Eileen Lively, and all five have worked in the entertainment industry. Talk about good genes. Oh, and not to mention Blake's net worth of $30 million. Number 9. Dennis and Randy Quaid Brothers Dennis and Randy Quaid have had many things in common. Parents, a love of acting, and tons of public struggles. Younger brother Dennis's career took off in the 80s thanks to roles in Interspace, The Big Easy, and Great Balls of Fire. But in the 90s, he struggled with substance abuse disorder, an eating disorder, and eventually a messy divorce from America's sweetheart, Meg Ryan. Older brother Randy, meanwhile, made a name for himself in the 70s and 80s, even earning an Oscar nomination for The Last Detail in 1973, and getting a massive fan base as Cousin Eddie in the National Lamp Pond's vacation movies. But a while back, he got into quite a bit of trouble with the law. Quaid and his wife Evie were wanted on a felony vandalism charges in California in 2010. The Quaids were detained at the Canadian border one night while trying to re-enter the United States after Canadian officials granted Evie citizenship, but denied Randy permanent residences and said he would be deported. Court papers said the Quaids damaged or destroyed furniture, a fireplace and a mirror in the guest room and so much more. 
Number 8, Ariel Winter and Jimmy Workman. Ariel Winter is best known for playing middle sister Alex on the popular ABC sitcom Modern Family. But in real life, Winter is the youngest of three, with an older sister and an older brother. What fans might not realize though is that they might already know her brother. His name is Jimmy Workman and he played Pugsley in The Addams Family and Addams Family Values in the 90s. Winter's family dramas have been in the media for years. As People reports, she and her brother are currently estranged. Ever since Workman sided with their mother when she denied Winter's abuse allegations. According to a port, Winter was allegedly subjected to slapping, hitting, and pushing by workmen, as well as quote, vile name calling, personal insults about minor or minor's weight, attempts to sexualize minor, and deprivation of food for an extended period of time. Number 7, Mary Kate, Ashley, and Elizabeth Olsen. Mary Kate Olsen is an American businesswoman, fashion designer, equestrian, and former actress. And Ashley Fuller Olsen is an American businesswoman and former actress as well. They began their acting career nine months after their birth, sharing the role of Michelle Tanner in the television sitcom Full House from 1987 to 1995. They also starred in numerous films together. In 1993, the production company Dull Star Entertainment Group was founded, which produced a long string of television films and direct-to-video releases featuring the girls. They starred in Passport to Paris and 1999, Our Lips Are Sealed in 2000, Winning in London in 2001, Holiday in the Sun in 2001, and in the television series So What Little Time from 2001 to 2002, for which they were nominated for a Daytime Emmy Award for Outstanding Performer in Children's Programming. They starred in Getting in There in 2002, When in Rome in 2002, The Challenge in 2003, and made cameos in Charlie's Angels Full Throttle in 2003 as well. And the last film they starred in was New York Minute in 2004. They continued their acting career independently, appearing with a few guest star roles in films and television and shows, with Mary Kate's very last film being Beastly in 2011. Now on to Lizzie. Elizabeth Chase Olsen is an American actress. Olsen began acting at the age of four and she starred in her debut film role in the thriller Martha Marcy May Marlene in 2011, for which she was acclaimed and nominated for a Critics' Choice Movie Award among other accolades, followed by a role in the horror film Silent House. Olsen also received a BAFTA Rising Star Award nomination and graduated from New York University two years later. But Olsen gained worldwide recognition for her portrayal of Wanda Maximoff or Scarlet Witch in the Marvel Cinematic Universe media franchise, starring in the superhero films Avengers Age of Ultron, Captain America Civil War, Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame, and Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness, as well as the miniseries WandaVision. Her performance in WandaVision garnered her nominations for a Primetime Emmy Award and a Golden Globe Award. Combined, the three siblings have an estimated net worth of $511 million. While Mary Kate and Ashley used to be very famous in the early 2000s, the two stars have still managed to maintain a $500 million net worth, which gives each of the twins $250 million. Elizabeth Olsen, on the other hand rose to fame recently with her current net worth at 11 million dollars. Number 6, Lily and Alfie Allen. In 2006, British pop star Lily Allen released a song called Alfie, playfully begging her lazy brother to straighten out his life and get a job. So though they may not realize it, Game of Thrones fans might have this song to thank for one of the show's most noteworthy characters. Lily's little brother Alfie Allen joined the hit HBO series as Theon Greyjoy in 2011. He even earned an Emmy nomination for his performance in 2019. So I guess he can tell his sister thanks. Lily's net worth is also $4 million and her brother's is actually higher than hers at $6 million. Number 5, Florence Pugh and Toby Sebastian. Florence Pugh has had a huge past few years, with acclaimed roles in Midsommar, Little Woman, and Black Widow. Because they work under different names, you likely miss that her brother, Toby Sebastian, is also an actor. Most notably, he was in the fifth season of Game of Thrones and an opera singer in the 2017 The Music of Silence, with his net worth of around $2 million and Florence's of $8 million. Number 4, Kate and Oliver Hudson. Almost famous star Kate Hudson and Rules of Engagement star Oliver Hudson are, unknown to many, both the children of Goldie Hawn and Bill Hudson. After a messy divorce, the siblings were raised by Hawn and stepfather Kurt Russell, and were later very publicly disowned by their biological father. Ever since Oliver Hudson's harsh Father's Day Instagram post, which featured him and his younger sister Kate Hudson as kids, posing with their biological father Bill Hudson, and read Happy Abandonment Day. Bill claimed that he did his best to remain in his children's life for years, but that their mother increasingly pitted them against him. After years of back and forth, Oliver's Instagram post was a final straw for him. The duo now work together under the banner of Kate's activewear brand Fabletics, with her big brother Oliver taking over the men's division FL2. Number 3, Jonah Hill and Beanie Feldstein. In recent years, Jonah Hill has shown the world that he is able to tackle any genre, moving on from teen comedies like Superbad to more serious films like the Oscar-nominated baseball flick Moneyball. And given Hill's success as both an actor and director, it should come as no surprise that talent runs in the family. Hill's younger sister, Beanie Feldstein, earned accolades for her performance in 2019's hilarious coming-of-age dramedy Booksmart. And she also appeared in Greta Gerwig's Oscar-nominated film Lady Bird in 2018. If you weren't aware that Hill and Feldstein were related, don't feel bad. Though Hill's last 
name is legally Feldstein, Hill is his middle name, only his sister still uses the family name professionally. Despite the difference, these two have a special sibling bond. The Hill got a Hello Beanie tattoo in 2018, in honor of his sister's performance in the 2017 Broadway Hello Dolly, with Jonah's net worth of $16 million and his sister's net worth of $3 million. Number 2, Miley and Noah Cyrus. Together, the two ladies have an estimated net worth of $163 million. However, a majority of it comes from Miley Cyrus. The former Disney Channel star currently has a net worth of $160 million, while her younger sister Noah, who is no doubt just as wild as Miley, is estimated to have only $3 million. Now, I thought it was obvious that they were siblings, but some people really didn't know. And those of you that don't, I'll tell you a bit about Noah. Noah Cyrus is an American singer and actress. As a child actor, she voiced a titular character in the English dub of the film Ponyo in 2008, as well as having minor roles in shows like Hannah Montana with her sister and Doc. In 2016, she made her debut as a singer in the single Make Me Cry, featuring Labyrinth, which peaked at number 46 on the Billboard Hot 100. She has released three extended plays, Good Cry in 2018, The End of Everything in 2020, and People Don't Change in 2021. Her debut studio album, The Hardest Part, was then released on September 16th, 2022. And she was also nominated for Best New Artist at the 63rd Annual Grammy Awards. Oh, and fun fact, they also have three other siblings, including the famous Trace Cyrus. With his net worth of $3 million, just like Noah. Now coming in at number one, Chris, Liam, and Luke Hemsworth. Brothers Chris Hemsworth from Thor and Liam Hemsworth from The Hunger Games are known all over the world for their dashing good looks and acting skills. But all too often, people overlook the third Hemsworth brother, Luke, who plays Ashley on HBO's sci-fi drama Westworld. With Chris's net worth at $130 million, Liam's at $28 million, and Luke's at $3 million, there's a reason I put these siblings at number one. But that is all. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.